But until that time, if you try to claim that you know the Bible and you know the history better than them, you're just acting like a monkey in a zoo throwing shit because that's impossible. It's uh, there is a dangerous video gaining popularity called Satan's Guide to the Bible. Why do Christians find somebody giving information dangerous? dangerous. <laughs> Look, if the information was totally just worthless and bizarre, like somebody talking about the flat earth, no one would call it dangerous. The reason they're calling it dangerous is because it's true and it's hurting their collection and prop propaganda campaign. And what's going to be so insanely funny, besides the fact that Mike is a liar, a con man, and a shill for the greatest fraud in history, he's apparently impervious to the idea that he gaslights, projects, uses a double standard, special pleading. And at the end of the day, he's, he accuses the people he disagrees with for the very things that makes Christianity what it is, and that is lying to children. Christianity would not exist if it was not lying to kids. Hello, this is Michael Beverly. Welcome to Truth Spotting Thursdays, a look at specific lies that apologists tell it wasn't slavery as we think of that when they're presenting the gospel. For example, chattel slavery is outlined in the Old Testament. There's no denying this. Each week, I'm going to pick one specific lie with a short clip. All right, in full disclosure, the clip this week isn't exactly short. It's like a little under 40 minutes. I'll try to cut it down a little bit. If you haven't seen the Satan's Guide, it's kind of gone viral. It's not that old. Go check it out. It's very well produced. Now, look, I want to I want to say something right here. There might be things in that in that uh, documentary that are still controversial or not a hundred percent settled. Granted. But it's kind of like saying – it's kind of like when you have an argument with somebody about evolution and it's like, yeah, no, let's teach the controversy. Let's, let's be fair and show all sides. You know what? There's some sides that are just so ridiculous that it, it's just a waste of time and it's disrespectful to even spend a second on it, like flat earth. Like if you think that we live on a flat earth, you're just not worth anyone's time. And I think people like that should be ignored. If you deny evolution, you're in the same boat. You're just, you're just completely scientifically illiterate. Go read some books. Go read, study, and then get back to me. If you have something intelligent to say, I'll listen. That illustrates a pretend children's Sunday school class learning from Satan as their substitute teacher. He claims that pastors keep secrets from their congregants. Yeah, well, the first claim of Satan here is right. I was a Christian for 38 years, and I'm hardly illiterate. Um, you may not think I'm right, but I'm not stupid. There are tons of stuff, including all, I, I want to say 100%. It might not be 100%, but I think it's pretty close, of all the stuff he talks about in the Satan's Guide to the Bible and all the stuff that I read about when I first picked up a Bart Ehrman book that I was shocked. I was shocked 38 years as a Christian, and also I'm reasonably well read. In fact, I've read hundreds of Christians. I used to read a, not so much apologetics because I didn't see a reason for it since I, since I believed. But I read a lot of Christian books, and I listened to sermons, and I was around the church again, like I said, for nearly four decades. I did not know almost all, if, if not all, of this stuff. Why? Because it's true. Pastors don't talk about this stuff to their congregations. Why? Because it's harmful for attendance. Be honest, Mike Winger. Be honest. If your Christianity cannot stand up to you being honest, is it really worth, is it, is it really something that you should cling to if you have to lie and ops, 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 fuck. Yeah, I have a little bit of a speech impediment. Pe speech impediment. Damn it. Obs, obs, obfuscate. Obs, ob. 
How do you say that word? Obs obfuscate. You know what I mean. I'm gonna leave. I'm not gonna edit this out because you know, like I try to keep it real around here. I when I when I grew up, the public schools believed in whole language, so I was taught to sight read. So I can't spell and I don't know phonics, but I can read. Like I'm very literate. I I can pass tests. I'm, I have a reasonably decent IQ, but I just have a problem with some words. I, my apologies. But that that he will reveal those secrets and tell them the truth. Can you please analyze this video and refute his false claims about the Bible? Notice how the Christian asked the question. Could could you could you uh, explain about all these false claims about the Bible instead of asking, you know, can you can you analyze these claims and let me know where I might be wrong or where my assumptions or what I was taught could be wrong? No, it's he's already got the conclusion. Dude, why even ask the question? Why? Like, if you're a Christian and you know the Satan's guide to the Bible is a bunch of leftist, propaganda, skeptic, atheist lies, and you know Mike Winger is the good guy, like, why listen? Like, and why'd Mike Winger even make this? Why'd he even go? Th he went 30 minutes over. He could have just said, hi, family. I got a question about the Satan's Guide to the Bible. It's all bullshit because those skeptic, atheist, heathens are being are being led by Satan. Funny how they name the thing the Satan's Guide. And it's just a bunch of deception and lies. Okay, next question. Instead, what Mike does is he spends about a half hour, half an hour. Now he says, oh, "Like I can't do a full anal, I can't fully analyze this. It would take hours and hours, which is fair. Like I'm not criticizing the guy. He's allowed to prioritize his time however he wants. I'm not criticizing that. But, but if you if the Christians who listen to him don't actually care about the actual real subject and the real answers, Mike could have just said." Don't listen to those secular, dark-hearted scholars who love Satan but think they're atheists when they're really not atheists. They really hate God and they're really being led by the devil. Don't listen to them. That's it. And then he could go on to other questions like, Dear Mike, I'm a Christian married to an unchristian and he wants to have another child and i'm not sure if i should have a child with an unbeliever can you help me like those like those are the kind of things that like a guy like mike could actually you know give his honest opinion as a christian and nobody can question it like whatever he says is his opinion you know and if somebody if somebody has got such shallow self-worth that they're going to go to some guy on the internet to ask him whether they should get a divorce or stay married or have more kids I am I'm referring to an actual question that went through the comments as I was watching the thing. So that's where that came from. But I mean, if your life is that shallow that you're gonna ask a guy on the internet about your marriage in a question and answer period, come on. I feel sorry for you. But my point stands. If if Mike's gonna address this thing, then that he should do it honestly and he's admitting that there's valid things here to talk about but what he's going to do is he's going to use a lot of like slanderous bullshit and he's going to well let's get to his stuff i'll point out when he starts lying which probably going to happen really fast i can't analyze the whole thing obviously it's an hour and a half long and i'm not going to whenever you do something like that it would take you know two or three hours to analyze it um in full, but I will definitely give you some stuff that I think you guys can use. Let's start by just explaining how this how this thing works. Here you go. Here are some clips that I will play. Um, I should have planned this part out a little bit better. Here we go. Let me uh, let me show you guys. It starts off like this: Satan talking to the little kids. I'm here to reveal peacefully hidden Bible secrets. Bible secrets. So Satan is um, doing a thing where he is basically. Um, all right, so Satan says, hey, kids, I'm going to show you these secrets. I'm going to tell you these things that nobody ever tells you. Then he goes on to explain that the pastors in your church, they know these secrets and they're keeping them from you. So this creates a bit of anxiety in the average listener, I think. And why would that be, Mike Winger? Why would people have some anxiety when they're told their pastors have been lying to them? Could it be because it has a ring of truth to it? 
Like, if I produced a video and it said, all Christian pastors are secretly reptilian aliens from another planet, would that create any anxiety in anybody? No, they would know it's a joke. They wouldn't be worried. There would be zero anxiety. The reason that this created anxiety is because it has a ring of truth to it. And guess why it has a ring of truth to it? Voila, because it's true. Pastor Mark knows these Bible secrets too? He does. Like lots of pastors, he learned a bunch of Bible secrets at seminary. And he won't share them with us? He's keeping secrets. So he's they're keeping them from you. But guess what? Don't worry. Scholars, scholars, these, these objective, you know, really smart people who are only ever interested in truth. Lies! I once heard a philosopher, and he may have been quoting Nietzsche, but I'm not sure. He said, one of the most effective and also most vicious lies is to tell the truth but to tell it in such a way that it's perceived to be a lie by the person who hears you say the statement. So Mike just said scholars, these objective, really smart people who are only ever interested in the truth. But he said it in a sarcastic way. And so the meaning is they're, they're not really only ever interested in the truth, that they have, they have an agenda. But the funny thing is, is he's actually saying the truth for the vast majority of, of really smart, objective scholars. Now, there, there could be sociopath scholars out there that don't care about the truth and, you know, they get off in line to people. That, that could be true. But let, let's put them in a special bucket. You know, the sociopath liars who, who use the truth and the use lies to, um, get only what they want and they don't really care about the truth they don't really care they don't care about the lies or the truth they're only trying to reach their objectives there there are people uh, people of the lie by scott peck um the the road less traveled uh, is is what made him famous but people of the lie is about these types of sociopathic people that don't care about other people because they don't have empathy so if we exclude those i think it's fair to say that scholars are trying to find the truth and they do care about the truth they do they're really smart and when mike says sarcastically oh they oh all they ever really care about is the truth so he's trying to project to his audience and this is one of the lies that he does that they don't so it's it's one thing to say I disagree with, say, Bart Ehrman, for instance. I disagree with Bart Ehrman's conclusion. It's another thing to call Bart Ehrman a liar or accuse Bart Ehrman of not caring about the truth. Do you see the difference there? Unlike every other human being who has a bunch of mixed motives and everything they do. This is an interesting admission, Mike Winger. If you're just going to say everybody has mixed emotions, then that's a wash, right? You, you don't have to be a mathematician, but when you're doing an equation and you have something here and here that cancel each other out, they cancel each other out, right? So if everybody has these mixed emotions, we, can, we don't need to talk about it. They cancel each other out. Then we can just look at the claims. Now, I would posit that when it comes to mixed motives in history, about religion that I'm going to default on the guy trying to prove his religion is true has a stronger bias than the non-religious historian that's just seeking history for the sake of history because they love history they're you know they're working to write books or they're a professor or whatever they just love history now you might say oh no 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 that's not fair but I'm going to prove to you right now that it is fair. Why? Well, it's very simple. I'll give you an example. When it comes to arguing about the causes, the root causes, what caused the American Civil War, you're going to have a lot of different viewpoints. Everybody knows that slavery was involved. Everybody also knows that there were other issues like 
you know, states' rights, the right to secede, was the right to secede in the Constitution or not? Some of the things that Lincoln said was, um, you know, I'm going to do everything I can to keep the union together because he felt the union should be undivisible as part of the foundation of the country. So all of those things, and some of them are very emotional things like slavery, get get brought into the argument about the causes and the effects of the of the American Civil War. But there's nobody, nobody ever argues that it didn't happen. You following me? Everyone agrees that the war happened, right? There's nobody that disagrees that there was Jefferson Davis and Abraham Lincoln and, you know, General Grant and General Stonewall Jackson and and you know the basic facts about battles those nobody just nobody argues about that stuff you, are you following me here but when it comes to stuff that has religious significance there is massive disagreement massive disagreement now when you talk to a a scholar who is a uh, with the LDS a Mormon church and he is defending the things in the Book of Mormon, everyone else in the field who's not a Mormon can see plainly that he's biased. He's biasedly trying to prove the Book of Mormon, which is nonsense. Like DNA has proved it's nonsense. Archaeological digs have proved it's nonsense. The, the Book of Mormon's historical claims are nonsense. Like nobody except a Mormon accepts them. And, and Mike Winger, you know that. And if you're an evangelical Christian, you know that. So when it comes to these historical things about the Bible, I am not saying that it couldn't be possible that somebody has some, ha, 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 it's the atheists and the Jews. They have a conspiracy. Ha, ha. Like, that could be possible. I'm not saying it's not logically impossible. But for the most part, for the most part, the historians that go into those fields just love history. And another weird thing, Mike Winger, is a lot of those historians started off as Christians. That's what gave them their initial love for the New Testament and that history and that time of Christ. You can't possibly say Bart Ehrman is biased to be an atheist because he was not an atheist when he started. That is just in name it makes you seem like an ideologue that doesn't care about the truth at all when you attack bart ehrman's character and it's also disgusting um they're going to tell you the real truth okay this is another lie by mike when he says they're going to tell you the real truth but he says it in a sarcastic way communicating to his audience that the, these historians are actually lying that Mike Winger is lying. He's blatantly lying here to anyone that knows the whole picture. Now you might say, oh, well, you're just biased and you're, no, 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 no. Mike Winger is accusing them of being liars and not caring about the truth. And this is as far as you can get from reality if you've bothered to read or listen to lectures by people in the field that love history. He is slandering and misaligning the motives of historians. Now, that doesn't mean that every historian's conclusion is the right one. But you know what? If you, if you, talk, to the, if you talk to historians, there are some issues in which they will say, this is my opinion. I'm not 100% sure about this thing. And there will be other times when they will say things like, it's the overwhelming consensus that this happened, and I believed it happened, and uh, you know, it's it's clear that this thing happened. So here's here's what he says about that. They'll tell us what Pastor Mark learned in seminary. They will. The biblical scholars will tell you the Bible secrets. The scholars then form the basis of the video. So in the video, Satan makes a claim. Then he has like a little Jesus cartoon character who will make a claim. And then like a scholar or the kids will. And then the scholar will show up and I'll play a video of a scholar where they refute that claim. And they basically show that the Bible is bunk. Okay, here's another lie by Mike. They basically show the Bible is bunk. First of all. That's not what they do. Second of all, 
when you have to sling mud and attack your opponent in such a way, it just undermines your position. So if, if any of you listening to me are fair-minded Christians who actually care about the truth and want to pursue truth, which is what Mike is trying to keep you from doing by slandering people and lying and sl slinging mud, then dismiss this claim by Mike that these guys are just trying to prove the Bible is bunk. Sorry, right when I have an important thought, the demons come out in silly dog and he goes crazy. So what were we, what were we talking about, friends? Scholars. Mike wants to accuse these scholars of setting out to prove that the Bible is bunk. We show that the Bible is bunk. The Bible is bunk. The Bible is bunk. The Bible is bunk. Amazing news flash. Mike Winger deconstructs. The Bible is bunk. 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 Forgive my childness. Forgive my child, child, childishness, childish, childishness. Forgive me my child, Jesus Christ. You know, it's really hard to be a YouTuber wannabe when you can't talk. Child, my child, forgive my childlike behavior. There we go. I'll just pick a different word. Now, first of all, a lot of these scholars, um, started off as Christians and a lot of them actually love the Bible they just they just don't they don't love religious bullshit a lot of them love history and you know ancient history or biblical history whether it's Old Testament or New Testament or some combination or the time of Jesus a lot of them love that history and they set out to look at what things are likely true probably true you know, almost certainly true and things that are likely not true are, are almost certainly not true. Like there's a spectrum. They're not sitting out to prove the Bible is bunk. See, so Mike is poisoning the well here and he's, and he's throwing so much mud that in, 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 in any listener's mind that doesn't know the topic and hasn't read they're just going to, I mean, they're, they're going to think, if they trust him, they're going to think his impression is right. These guys are just skeptical atheist monsters who want to trash the Bible. So first of all, I challenge you to go look, go look at the, at the credentials and the histories of the people that he's maligning. Not just in this video, but do some, you know, I... I I was struggling here whether to throw out a bunch of names because I've read a lot of these guys from from critical scholars and not enough. Like I'm not an expert. And I haven't read enough. I'm, I'm, I am interested in the topic and I have read a bit and I've watched a bit of lectures. And I'm doing more because I, I'm, I'm interested in in the topic. But but rather than name names, I'm, I would just say go do your own research. Start searching on YouTube for debates and talks and lectures and discussions about this stuff and look into the credentials of the people and you know try to find people with decent credentials in in history if that's what you're interested in and see what they have to say and then do your own layman style research you know do do some reading do some fact checking and and what you'll find is a lot of these scholars love the Bible and they love history and they started off as Christians and they moved they moved away from being fundamentalists because the history does not back up the fundamentalist inerrant view of the Bible. Now, could the Bible be inerrant the way you know Mike Winger wants it to be? Um I think it's impossible because it's self-contradictory, but I know there's, I know apologists have excuses that those aren't really contradictions, but they can be resolved through words, 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 words. There are scholars who are still Christians, 
fact, I did a live stream with one last week, and I will refer to him since I talked to him personally on my channel. His name's Mike Lacona. So in Mike Lacona's debate with Bart Ehrman, he said he didn't believe that the dead rising from the graves, that the book, the book of Matthew, the gospel, at the end of the Gospel of Matthew, uh, at the crucifixion, there's some things that happen in Matthew. An earthquake, the sky goes dark, the the temple curtain is torn, and the dead rise up from the graves. Now, Mike, Mike Lacona is a committed Christian. He loves Jesus. Um, he believes, he believes, you know, he believes in Christ. He's a saved Christian. He's not an atheist. He's not a demon. He's He's not not pursuing truth. He's trying to pursue truth. And what Mike says is, look, when when the writer wrote that the sky went dark, they're not they're not lying. It's not a mistake in the Bible. It's a literary device, meaning like we were so sad that the sky went dark. And he says when the, when they describe the earthquake, the they're talking about like it's an earth shattering event. Me. Now it's completely opposite of the, of Mike Winger's view. When Mike Winger was debating Matt Delahunty, and Matt Delahunty referred to the dead rising up in Matthew, uh, Mike Winger was practically in tears. He says, you are mocking my faith. And the thing is, in Bart Ehrman and Mike Lacona's debate, Bart Ehrman refer referred to these dead rising from the grave as zombies. And Mike Lacona went with it. He said, he said, he used the word zombies, and he said, I don't think they literal dead rows like the literal zombies didn't happen but i but mike doesn't think those things are mistakes he thinks they're literary devices now is is mike trying to do history the best that he can and he believe yes is he biased towards his christianity yes now if you say oh but then well the atheist is biased towards their atheism uh, that may be true in some cases but if you listen to some people i i would suggest you listen to um, Dennis McDonald, because Dennis McDonald, you, know, you can listen to him on the Myth Vision with Derek Lambert. He talks about his love for the Bible. He talks about he lives. I think it's a retirement community he lives in with a lot. A, a lot of his friends are, are like retired missionaries. He's like, I have tons of friends that are Christians, and we talk about this stuff all the time. I don't hate religion. I don't hate Christians or Christianity. I love the Bible. Now, he's an atheist. He started off as a Christian. Is he biased towards this deep? dark conspiracy atheism and he's out to trick and lie to people <laughs> no come on just listen to the guy for two seconds he's a decent human being he's he cares about the truth now does that mean his conclusions are necessarily right i'm not i'm not arguing that what i'm arguing is that when mike winger uh attacks the motives of people that are that are now atheists, but that started as Christians, he's he's being obscenely and disgustingly evil. Because if anything, these people's motivations when they started was to prove how true the Bible was and to prove how the Bible can be relied upon as a history book. That's like if you listen to Bart Ehrman's testimony, he's going to Moody. He's a he's a charismatic tongue speaking Christian. He didn't set out to prove the Bible was bunk. That's a lie, Mike Winger. Bart Ehrman set out on his path and journey because he loved Jesus. His presupposition was Jesus really rose from the dead and that Jesus is the only means of salvation and the only way to reconcile one's life with God. That was Bart Ehrman's starting point. Now, you can say his conclusions now are wrong, but don't you dare attack his motives and call and slander him and then expect to be respected by anybody except the sycophants who are too lazy to go read a book. And I'm talking to you, Christians. If you won't pick up Bart Ehrman or any of these other guys and actually read and get away from ideologues like Mike Winger, and in no way should you trust me for anything other than pointing you in the direction of places to look and pointing out the hypocrisy in things that people that are teaching you are saying. Because I'm not an expert and I'm not a historian, but I went and read stuff. I went and read and I've read, you know, and I've read Lee Strobel. It's embarrassing. And I just, and I, and I just bought this. 
So I read both sides. And you know what? This book is – like I know this book's going to be embarrassingly bad because I've listened to Jay Warner Wallace lie and misrepresent. And he's not a historian. He's, he's a con artist. And if you don't believe me, you think, no, 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 you're biased against Jay Warner Wallace. I challenge anyone out there – to read J. Warner Wallace or Lee Strobel and then go read actual real historians, real historians, including Christian ones like Mike Lacona, who who I disagree with his conclusions, but I say he has integrity and I, I don't I don't and I don't come I don't come on here and say his motives are bad. The person whose motives I think are bad here is Mike Winger. Because Mike Winger is not a historian. He, come on, who who are you going to believe? If you're going to believe Mike Winger just because he's a good Christian and you love, you know, you love his message, so you're going to trust him on history. Well, fine, but don't act like you care about the truth if you do that, because the truth is absolutely something you're completely dismissing. Um, and it's bad. It's bad history. Really, it, you're going to trust. A Bible thumping preacher to tell you what is good history or not. See, Mike has a presupposition. Mike went into this as a child. Jesus is the truth. Praise Jesus. And then he went and did apologetics with the mindset that the Bible's inerrant. So that's why Mike Winger lands on when Matthew says the dead rose from the grave, he believes it, literally. Even though it's not historical, it's bad history. Like no legitimate historian will say, uh, yes, it's it's for sure these these dead people rose from the grave. Now, the the only historians that will say this happened will be fundamental Christian ones, because even even Christians, like good Christians, like uh, Mike Lacona, say no, that didn't actually happen because it's bad history to take literary devices and say they literally happen that's bad history now if you want to say no i don't believe it's a literary device i believe it actually happened because i believe the bible's true and inerrant in everything and it says the dead rose so the dead rose it's not a literary device it happened historically and i believe it the bible says it i believe it that settles it that's fine you could believe that but but that's not historical. Like that, that's not his, you're not doing history, you're doing religion. And just keep that in mind. If you want to be religious and have faith and you want to believe whatever the Bible says literally happened and everything Mike Winger tells you is literally true, that's fine. But just don't be dishonest about what you're doing. You're believing things on faith, not on historical accuracy. And when Mike Winger says the people in this video, like experts and historians, when they're doing bad history, it's like a 10 year old telling you that you're taking your car to the wrong mechanic because he knows that 10 year old knows it's bad. It's authorship isn't legitimate in places. It's got moral issues. Wait, what? It's got moral issues. <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> it's frustrating when you mix domains because morality is very subjective. And as, as much as Christians like to say, no, there's an objective standard that God made. Yeah, but you don't know what it is if that was true. If if God made an objective standard, not there's not one of you out there, including Mike Winger, that could actually write out a list of rules that is objectively true that people would follow. Just take a simple thing like thou shall not lie. And, and how many lies have, my, have I counted of Mike's now? Three, four, five. Now he would say he's not lying, of course. It's very subjective. It's subjective is my point on what is a lie. And it's also, it's also, there's plenty of times where lying is the greater moral good. And that's easy to prove. I won't go down that trail. You all know that this is true. There's times when lying is the morally right thing to do uh, for many reasons. There's many other things. We could introduce trolley problems here. I can, I can ask you about war and the death penalty 
and how you know how do you how do you take thou shall not kill or thou shall not murder and and extrapolate that into into rules about how to live it's subjective and then Jesus was errant Jesus himself was seriously and severely flawed and falsely predicted his own uh, his the end times and okay so Mike is mixing domains here if you're a Christian and you have faith and you believe the words of Jesus and and Jesus can't have said or done anything wrong then you must you must interpret everything in a way that fits what everybody agrees happened so everybody agrees that the second coming that the restoration of the kingdom that it, all the wrongs being made right and God establishing his kingdom didn't happen right just look outside your front door you can see the proof or watch the nightly news so what christians do is they look at the transfiguration and they say whoa the kingdom of god showed up Woo Woo and that and that means when jesus said some of you won't taste death uh before i come back that's proof well guess what people guess what paul which wrote before the gospels believed that Jesus was coming, returning to restore the kingdom right away. In fact, he told some people, it's better not to get even married because the end is near. So the gospel writers, what they did, that, look, historically speaking, the idea that Moses and Elijah came and showed up and that Jesus glowed in white. Okay, as a historian, that didn't happen. That's, that's a, uh, it's, it's a it's a religious thing. It's not history. Now you can believe that it happened. That's fine, but that's a faithful belief, not a historical belief. Now, let, let's just imagine. Just grant me for a second that maybe Christianity isn't true. Like I know you believe it's true, but just grant me for one second. What if it wasn't true? The early gospel writers who looked at Paul's writings and understood the story would need an excuse they would need to add something to the text to explain why jesus didn't come back and establish the kingdom like he said he was going to and now christians today can say oh we'll see this proof text proves that jesus wasn't wrong and that's what mike's doing here okay well that's fine as long as mike is honest and says this is a position of faith but the moment mike starts attacking historians he enters the realm of a propagandist liar because historically speaking, it appears very clear that the early writings of Jesus, so thus his speeches and Paul's writings, they reveal that the earliest Christians believed that in the eminent return and the eminent restoration of God's uh, kingdom that, you know, the the seed of David and so forth and that and that the rights would be wrong the the wrongs would be righted that's the belief so what Mike does here is he mixes domains religion and faith with history and then he calls the historians these terrible mean liars that have an agenda but guess what it's projection the person with an agenda here is Mike the person who is line and and spewing propaganda because he has an agenda is mike historians by and large whether you know whether they have a bias or not look i, I love how christians pull out well everyone has a bias well come on when you, if you read pick something that's not religious pick up barbara tuchman's uh, a distant mirror where she writes about the I think it's the 13th century or maybe the 14th century, the, the middle. It, it's super fascinating. It gets a little bit scholarly. Uh, I don't know if I've actually ever com completely read the whole book. I've, I've gone through it twice, but I think I skim read because some parts were more interesting than others. But she pulls a history from a certain guy and, and uses him as a, as a, a tool to write about the period, right? So, when she does that as a historian, like she may not have everything exactly perfect because obviously stuff from four or five, six hundred years ago, much less 2000, it gets murky. 
But nobody accuses her. Nobody reads her book and accuses her of having a, a satanic, devilish agenda. At least I don't think so. Why? Well, because she's not, you know, it's not, she's not, she's, she's not writing about Jesus. So, you know, nobody has a problem accepting what happened in the 14th and 15th centuries when we're talking about the wars between France and England. But for some reason, when people talk about history in the time of Jesus, they get accused of having these, these devilish agendas. Mike, that's, it's just irresponsible. You're lying. And well, anyways, Mike pontificates about how these people are wrong because of the transfiguration, because Moses and Elijah came back to the to the to planet Earth and proved that Jesus wasn't lying when he said that his that they people would see his power. Come on. I mean, it, it, from a historical standpoint, that his claim is ludicrous. Like if if history was done that way, you would have to accept the all the all the greek gods you know hercules really did these battles and and medusa really had snakes growing out of her head well it says it right there in the text duh and so all this sort of thing um Surprisingly, none of this is new to me. That's true there that this is this is known stuff. This is not new, but this is very much a, t a storytelling type of thing that's happening. In the video, they're going to tell you that it's pious Protestants who are believers who know about these things and they refuse to tell them to the congregants. And that is the term they use, pious Protestants, except their their scholars they're using are not pious protestants they're using like hector avalos and bart ehrman who are basically atheists and agnostics effectively atheists in their beliefs about god and others who would not be considered christians by christianity by like you know orthodox christian values about believing in the death and resurrection of christ um about believing basically in god uh, okay mike winger it's insane that you can just go on here and lie as a Christian man. Don't you feel any shame? So let's just go to Wikipedia. A Wikipedia. Avalos was born in Mexico. As a child, he was a fundamentalist Pentecostal preacher, child evangelist, and faith healer. He became so interested in the Bible that he immersed himself in biblical Hebrew. Mike, do you know Hebrew? No. Um, so he, he, he was a professor. Now, uh, Hector Avalos has pa passed on. He, he died in 2021. He was a professor of religious studies at um, Iowa State University. Now, it's very interesting to me because I've, I don't know, I haven't listened to, to uh, Hector Avalos's like, story out of his own mouth, so I, I don't know. I'm assuming the, the Wikipedia is reasonably accurate here. Um, this w w Wikipedia is not always accurate but it gets it gets fact checked and edited enough that it's I'm, I'm sure it's not completely in left field i feel confident saying that that uh hector was a christian i mean uh, a fundamentalist pentecostal preacher and child evangelist and faith healer now i know out of bart ehrman's mouth because i've heard him talk on youtube plenty of times he was a charismatic born again believer so mike you are a liar you're a liar you're lying you should be ashamed of yourself the two people that you just slandered right there. So you're saying that that you can't trust these historians because they're atheists or agnostics. No, Mike, that's not a, that's not a fair statement. Yes, they became agnostic atheists or agnostics or atheists, whatever you want to say. They became unbelievers. They were committed for Jesus Christians when they started their path of studying the Bible and the reason the reason that they became unbelievers is because they knew the Bible in Hebrew and Greek better than you Mike Winger and so in this discussion here who is more who who is more naive and more ignorant of the Bible that would be you Mike Winger where did you get your degree in ancient history where did you get your degree in Hebrew can you speak Hebrew, Mike? No, I don't think you can, can you? So when you tell your audience you can't trust these historians, Hector and Bart, because they're atheists, you're a fucking liar. You're a liar.
because you're not telling the audience the truth. The truth is both of those men love Jesus. Both of those men spent their childhood just like you, Mike, wanting to know Jesus better and wanting to serve Jesus for life. Both of those men went to college because they loved Jesus and they loved the Bible and they were committed Christians. Both of those men found out through studying, through studying the word, the Bible, because both of them knew the Bible better than you will ever know the Bible, Mike, unless you go get some uh, masters and PhDs in ancient history and Hebrew. When you do that, come back to me. But until that time, if you try to claim that you know the Bible and you know the history better than them, you're just acting like a monkey in a zoo throwing shit because that's impossible. It's impossible that you're a more qualified historian than these two men. And to say that you can't trust them on historical issues because they're atheists is pure bigotry. And it's hatred and you're lying. So, like, I get Christians lie for Jesus, but you're exposed, Mike Winger. You are a liar. If you were honest, you would tell your audience the truth that, that both Hector and Bart love Jesus with all of their heart and they were serving Jesus in a capacity that most of your audience will never even understand. And in that love for Jesus and in that love for the Bible, they went to study it extremely deeply and they got advanced degrees in studying it and they spent years learning the languages and they came to the conclusion. Now, you can disagree with their conclusion because Jesus told you, Mike, in your heart, just like he tells the Mormon boys, that you're right, Mike Winger, and those guys are mean and bad and ugly. They're wrong. You're a fucking terrible person, Mike Winger, You, you, because you're a liar and you slander good men. You slander people's motives, you slander their character, and you lie. And it's disgusting. It's fine to say that you disagree with Bar Ehrman's conclusions and Hector Avalos's conclusions, but you must say you disagree with their conclusions on faith, not on history and not on what the Bible teaches or says. Because if you think you know the better than the Bible and the language is better and the history better than guys like this. And it's not just Hector and Bart. It's many, many people in the field. You, you, like, you can't possibly be, believe that. If you did, you'd, it would be on par with you saying that, that you believe at night you go out and you're actually Batman. That would, ha- that would be how silly that would sound. Are you really Batman at night, Mike? Come on. Stop lying. If you're a Christian, you got to ask yourself, why do my guys have to lie? Why do they have to blatantly lie? Is Jesus, is the story of Jesus in the Bible so weak that you have to lie? Apparently so. It's disgusting. And and Mike owes an apology to to the family and friends of of Hector um, and to Bart Ehrman directly because Bart Ehrman is still living and breathing and still teaching. Because Mike is out here slandering. And I know Mike's not going to apologize. And I know Mike's not going to back down from his lies. But it's very telling. If you're a Christian, ask yourself why Mike Winger has to slander people and lie about them to get his message across. And it's disgusting. Why do you don't support this kind of disgusting stuff? You can have a different belief. You can believe in God. You can believe in Jesus on faith don't attack historians because they say things that counter your faith just say i think they're wrong on faith on faith i think they're wrong but on history those guys are are way more knowledgeable and their and and their insight is way way beyond what mike winger can even come close to comprehending So not only is he a liar, he's also ignorant on the subject he's pontificating about. And why does he do it? Because he knows that most of you all Christians are too lazy to go fact check and read the books yourself. And he knows that you're just going to accept his sweet, loving words because it's what you want to hear. Grow up.
this is this is going on consistently in this video is presented like this is sort of everybody knows this there's no argument on it that's the implication there's no argument on these facts and so it's standard stuff and really we're just hiding it from the congregants pastors people like myself we're, we're hiding it from you guys and um that is that is storytelling this is storytelling and propaganda this is not reality look <clears throat> Nobody is saying there's no argument about anything. People argue about everything. There's nothing in the world that people don't argue about. Well, that's a non sequitur. What, what historians, though, say is that the overwhelming consensus and, and the general belief in the field among qualified credentialed scholars are things like X. And when they say that, implied in it, implied in that, just like anything, is th there could be parts of it that are Im implied in those kind of statements about history is that there could be things that we don't know about, things that are wrong about consensus conclusions. Like, for instance, maybe... The Titanic never sunk, and the boat at the bottom of the ocean was created by alien beings from another planet. Like, that could be possible. But the overwhelming consensus in the history of the Titanic is what happened. Like, you know, the, the, the shipping line was overly confident, and the captain and the crew, you know, seemingly just thought they were in an indestructible boat, and, you know, a tragedy happened. Now... When you go back, you know, like the Titanic is recent enough history that there's not a there's not a massive amount of controversy about what happened. When you when you start going deeper into history, hundreds years or thousand years or two thousand or three thousand years, of course there's some murkiness and of course there's some uncertainty. But when historic so like if you ask historians and including even some Christian historians, about some of the things that happen in the Bible, they will tell you, no, that is very unlikely to have happened. It's not historical. For instance, the census that um, that brings Joseph and Mary to Bethlehem is, is ludicrous, right? So imagine in America, if every 10 years you had to go to the, to the homeland of your ancestors that would be ludicrous like no government and no empire would ever have done a, cons a census like what the bible shows it's ludicrous now were there were there censuses done back then yes but the census that uh, that is depicted in the gospels commanded by augustus caesar where joseph had to go back to where his thousand year past ancestors lived and and take his nine month about to give birth wife that's that's a, that story is nonsensical so no historian can say with a straight face that 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 certainly happened like there might be christian historians that say well they believe that it happened but if they do that they're they're believing on faith because historically that did not happen there's no record of it and nobody with with any credibility thinks that it's logical reasonable and if you think about it yourself it's ludicrous it's absolutely ludicrous like i don't know when the next american census is the constitution asks for for a census every 10 years what is census what do the census takers do they come to your house and they knock on your door and they count out you know, how many people live here why? Because a census needs to know where people live in a certain area. If a census sent people all over to where their ancestors came from, the census would now be worthless. So logically, we know the census as depicted that sent, you know, that so that Jesus could be born in Bethlehem, according to scripture, we know that's fiction. Like nobody with any credibility in, his, in, in history would argue that that thing actually happened. Because it's ludicrous, it's not historical, there's nothing in the records, and it doesn't make sense. Like, it absolutely, you can think about it yourself, it doesn't make any sense. There is no possible way the Romans would do that. It, it's illogical. So, there are some things in history that we can say with, with extreme confidence, historically, didn't happen. 
even though the Bible says they happen. So wh where does that get us? Well, if you talk to, to if you talk to somebody like Mike Lacona, who's a born again evangelical and loves Jesus, now I don't know his opinion on that particular topic, so I'm not representing what he says about that topic. But if you talk to Mike about the curtain tearing, the earthquake, the sky going dark, and the dead rising, he says they're literary devices. Now, when I talk to Mike, I ask him, like, where do you draw the line? And, you know, I, he has to pick a place, right? He has to pick a spot. And there's a certain point where he and every other Christian has to admit, if they're honest, that they're believing things on faith, not on the historical record, because not only is there no historical record, the claim itself is ludicrous. So, and there's lots of examples like that. So when, when, when Mike impugns the historians and, you know, the atheists, you know, the atheist historians that are out to deceive you, come on, he's, be, he is being dishonest. He is, be, he is the one, like, if there's a Satan who's the father of lies, then that's who, that's who is inspiring all the shit that comes out of Mike Winger's mouth because he's lying. He's not just lying, he's slandering people, and it's disgusting. And he needs to be called out by more people than me, because I'm just a tiny little YouTube channel. He needs to be called out by people in the field. He needs to be called out by Christian men and women who understand the history and they understand the reality of the situation. He needs to be called out by them. And they need to say, you know what, Mike, you're wrong. You're in your line. These these atheist ha, 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 historians don't have bad horrible motives they might be wrong but their motives are to seek historical truth the best that they can and even in that field there's there's disagreements but you know what happens when you when you talk when you listen to a couple you know non-believing historians argue about whether something happened or not that they, they you know they tend to give each other the the benefit of the doubt that they're not being intentionally deceive they're not intentionally trying to deceive and lie they just come into a different conclusion they're a lot more gracious you should learn something from them mike winger because you're not gracious and you're a liar here's an example of this where they try to present it as though everybody knows this stuff it's it's standard stuff that is um not not being acknowledged to you so here we go let me uh, play the clip on that the kinds of critical scholarship that I promote in my books, those are things that seminarians learn when they're training for ministry if they go to a mainline Protestant seminary. They're teaching Bart stuff to everyone? Anyone who has gone at least through, I would say, a master's level would be well aware of every argument that Bart Ehrman has ever presented. It's standard stuff. This is standard stuff that people are taught in all the mainline Christian theological seminaries across the country and in Europe. And yet most pastors who've gone through that training don't tell their congregations what it is that they've learned. So you get the idea. It's standard stuff. Now, what's interesting is if you actually got, say, James White, who they quote as their source for its standard stuff in seminary, then he would have then told you, and so are the arguments against it. You see, the, these arguments aren't standard stuff that is uncontroversial amongst all scholars, right? There, some of it is fairly uncontroversial. Some of it's very controversial. It's all presented with like with a single tone in this video, Satan's Guide to the Bible. The arguments against these things should also be standard stuff. If you're doing a robust educational environment in your seminary, then you're going to say, yeah, here's an argument against the book of Daniel. Here's one for it. Here's the two sides of the coin. All right, I'm going to end this here because we're pushing an hour. If you've stayed with me this far, thank you. Please share, please subscribe, please like, blah, 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 all that stuff. What what Mike just said here, okay, so here's the thing, Mike. The the documentary didn't, didn't have, you know, it didn't have an obligation to present, quote, the other side. Christians have been hearing that their whole fucking lives. I, like I said, I have nearly four decades in. I never heard all of this stuff like until I picked up a Bart Ehrman book. So this idea that, that they're unfair because they're not presenting both sides of the coin is just utter bullshit. Christians have been indoctrinated 
many since childhood for decades. They know your side of the story, Mike. They've been told since Sunday school. So the purpose of that documentary wasn't to say, oh, believe us, there's no controversy about any of this stuff. The purpose was to point out stuff that people haven't been told, which is the truth. I know it. I lived it. Pastors aren't going out there and being honest about any of this stuff, except maybe in very liberal churches. Why? Well, because it's not on message. It's not on message. And the point, the point you're trying to make here, Mike, is that they're being unfair because they're not, they're not showing that there's a controversy. Well, come on. This is the, this is the old, this is the old thing about teach the controversy in school because, because creationism is legit. Look, this went to go. If you're a Christian, go read some of the transcripts from the Dover trial. It's hilarious. The Christians come off as buffoons. And guess what? And this is I'm quoting somebody else, but I can't remember the Christian parents in those school districts, even though they might believe in creationism and might believe in intelligence design. They don't want their kids being raised and taught in these scientifically illiterate environments. Voila. That's why. So the judge on that case, I know people want to say, oh, it's the liberal courts. No, he was he was a conservative Republican church going judge. And he said, no, you haven't made your case. Intelligent design is is not science. It's a religion. So the same thing here. You can't mix domains. There's some claims in the Bible that are purely faith-based religious claims. And if you want to believe them, that's your business and your prerogative and it's your right. I'm not going to argue with you about it. What I will argue, though, is the moment you start saying that your faith base belief is history, that it's good history, that it's good history to believe certain things. No, it's not good history. It goes against history. Historians don't believe it. And that's where Mike is being, in, I, I have to say, he's being intentionally dishonest. Because if he was fair, he would say, he would say, look, folks, the historians by and large place the book of Daniel in like the second century and it's obvious so if if you've never studied this and i'm not an expert on it but essentially daniel makes a lot of predictions that all come amazingly true and then he starts making predictions that that don't come true and so historians look at that and go okay when he started making mistakes it seems kind of obvious that's that's around the time he was writing because because stuff in the future d that he predicted didn't happen and the stuff the stuff in the past he got exactly right. Why? Well, because it had already happened. That's the overwhelming historical position on the book of Daniel. And there's a lot more reasons. I, I go read some books on it. There's literary reasons. Like there's words in that, there's words that are used in the book of Daniel, like literary devices and words and language that didn't exist in the sixth century um, BC. So overwhelming historians you know, non-biased, you want to say, oh, well, they're atheists, so they're biased. Okay, fine. But overwhelming, overwhelmingly in the field, they look at Daniel and they say, okay, it was written around the second century. That's the overwhelming consensus. Now, if you don't believe that, that's fine. It's your prerogative. But just know that you're doing so on faith. It's a religion. It's not history. Just like the six days of creationism, Adam and Eve. You know, look, I used to be a young earth creationist and like many fundamentalists, I changed after reading Hugh Ross and, and other things, looking at evidence, I changed to believing in an old earth, right? And But, but I still kept my faith and I'm what I'm telling you is fine to do that. Look at the book of Daniel and say, I believe on faith. The moment you say, I believe on history that Daniel was written much earlier and all those prophecies were true because Daniel was inspired by God. Well, that is a faith claim, not a historical claim. Anyways, I'm Michael Beverly. I urge you, don't trust anything Mike Winger says. Don't trust anything I say. And don't trust anything any one individual scholar says. Go read the stuff. It's fascinating. The Bible's fascinating literature. The history's fascinating. 
the history, all the stuff that if you're just if you're the average Christian in the in the pew, I guarantee you, because I was there too and I read a lot, I was reasonably knowledgeable about Christianity, but I was blind to many, many, many things. And it's fascinating. Thank you.